I'd point out that uh, the uh, previous speaker, while very interesting, had nothing to do with this amendment. Number two, um, if the sponsor of this amendment care, really cared about um, um, domestic violence victims, he would have voted to close the boyfriend loophole, which he did not. Number three, the presence of a gun in domestic violence situations increases the risk of homicide by women by 500 percent. And this statistic is a grim reminder of why there should not be an exemption for domestic violence victims. So pass this amendment and you'll see an increase in domestic in, in, in homicides of women by 500 percent. I yield back. Who seeks recognition? For what purpose does Mr. Roy seek recognition? Mr. Strike, last word. The gentleman is recognized. Well, I support the amendment from the gentleman from Kentucky. I would note that the chairman just said that a, the existence of a firearm, I think he might have said in the household, I'm not sure, increases the likelihood of, of violence by 500% or something of that nature. I mean, I'd say, well, not if, not if the woman holds it. Uh, and, and then secondly, uh, then if you're just saying a firearm generally, I would say, well, then the next step for the chairman is to limit all firearms, which let's get to the heart of it, right? We know that that is where our colleagues wish to go because that's been stated any number of times over the last several decades and by many of the members of not just this committee, but my colleagues on the other side of the aisle generally in the entire house. And that's the reality. I mean, just a few weeks ago, we were debating another piece of legislation. We said, well, this is not, we're not going to ban, ban weapons. And here we are banning weapons. Um, that's the reality. Uh, we don't really want to talk about the truth. We want to politicize it and say, oh, well, you're taking money from the NRA. You're in the hip pocket of the gun lobby. I had a $30 million race last time. Okay. I think, I, think I've taken $4,000 from the NRA. Okay. I don't know how much from gun owners. I know how much my colleagues have taken from every town for gun safety, Bloomberg's organization, 17 members of this committee have taken between a thousand and I don't know, $5,000. Uh, I know nine of my democratic colleagues have taken money from the Brady organization between $2,500 and $8,500. I mean, you want to talk about the politics of it. I mean, we could say, fine, let's all, let's all be like Mr. Gates and, not take any of that kind of money and PAC money. All right, I'm actually open to that conversation. Maybe we should just, you know, stop doing that generally as a body. But don't pretend that, oh, because, oh, the powerful NRA body. I mean, frankly, I don't listen to the NRA. I find them pretty weak, frankly, usually. Uh, and, and I think that the fact of the matter is, we're, this is all politics, okay? That's, that's what it is, okay? But to say you're in the hip pocket of some organization because you took, 2,000, 4,000 bucks, any more than you guys for all the list of these organizations, which are all advocating for a political outcome just as well. And you know it. Of course you know it. It's literally the same. But the, the fact is, we're not addressing the actual cultural rot at the heart of all of this. I mean, the fact is that there have been no changes in firearm lethality in something like 60 years. Um, the Colt Armalite rifle the AR-15 on the civilian market since 1964. They rolled out the 1911 pistol in 1911. They're both magazine-fed semi-automatic weapons, and they've been around for forever. Nothing has changed in the technical ability to use those weapons. What has changed is a demonstrable cultural rot, a demonstrable breakdown in family, a demonstrable breakdown in our ability to hold people accountable, pointing our young men in directions that are healthy instead of unhealthy, not carrying around bags of cat heads or whatever the hell one of these psychos is doing in school when our civilization is breaking down and allowing this to occur. That, that's what we should be talking about, is not the tools anymore when we debate the liability provisions in a little bit about making gun manufacturers liable, then you should say GM is liable when some jackass drives a car through a crowd of people or a drunk uses the car. That's, the, that's what we're talking about. We've had more families had guns at the home 50 years ago than they do today. That's the truth. More American homes had guns. It's an absolute fact. More American families had guns in their homes 50 years ago than they do today. 
You can say there's more guns out there, but more homes had weapons in those guns 50 years ago. When I grew up in eighth grade, I did a physical science project on the ballistics of a 243. I brought the bullets into class. I was putting different amounts of grains into the casing to show how it would impact the ballistics and shot different loads, did a statistical analysis of it all. And the reality is, is that the people in my school district and area had lever actions, shotguns, semi-automatics in their pickup trucks and vehicles sitting in the parking lot at school. We just half the time with the door open, the door's unlocked. We have culturally destroyed our country, lifted accountability of parents and the ability of family units to make sure that we don't have these young men who are going off the rails. And we're targeting on this. And here we've got an amendment by the gentleman from Kentucky to allow women to be able to defend themselves with, as my colleagues say, a particularly effective weapon. And I think that women ought to be able to avail themselves of that. And I yield back. If you enjoyed this video, hit like and subscribe to our channel so you'll be sure to see similar videos from Blaze TV with the added bonus of signaling YouTube that your voice and opinion still matters. And if you're looking for more great conservative content, check out one of the two videos suggested here.